I've been asked to uh, provide a little bit of information for our public on the tax levy that we, our board just passed last evening. And I think what I'd like to do is to provide a little background of Illinois school finance, Illinois government finance, in, in reference to uh, what took place in Joe Davies County. And it all begins with uh, the notion that in Illinois, counties are either tax cap counties or non-tax cap counties. If they're tax cap, that is actually the property tax extension uh, law limit that is in, in place, or PTEL. And with, since that is the implication here with uh, Joe Davies County, that's the only thing I'm going to consider, and that is the tax cap county and the implications uh, there, thereof. In a, in a PTEL or tax cap county, the levy, and then we're talking about local property taxes now, this levy is going to produce revenue changes in two ways. The first of which is uh, legislatively put into place, and that is the tax, imp uh, the tax component called the, the consumer price index. And basically it's just telling people what the cost of living increase is, is at. In this case, the cost of living increase for this year is 2.7%. So part of a tax levy increase in a tax cap county is that, that consumer price index increase, 2.7%. The other consideration in terms of next year's uh, taxation is the assurance that public bodies want to, to take in getting new properties that are not on the tax roll now onto the tax roll. So whenever the new levy is put into place in a tax cap county, it's a combination of the consumer price index and the new property tax that you must capture. If you don't capture the new property, for all intents and purposes, it never gets captured in terms of generating taxation. So you could have, I'll give an example, you could have a number of new properties. Many children move into the school district as a result of building houses and new property. If that new property and the new houses don't get on the tax rolls, there is not property tax to support the number of students that have been added to the school district that the district must support. So that's one thing that a district must do in a, in a tax cap county is to make sure that that tax, taxation ends up on the tax rolls. So if you look at what our practice has been here in the Galena School District, it is to factor in in the increase that's shown publicly, we want to factor in the consumer price index that can never exceed 5% and the new property and to have the levy high enough to make sure we capture all the new property. So you kind of do the math and figure out what is the new property going to be, what is the consumer price index going to be, and come up with a percentage to make sure that it happens uh, appropriately to capture all the, all the revenue. The consumer price index can never exceed 5%. So we had an increase this year. Last year is 0.1% increase. Basically, cost of living was flat last year in our uh, recessionary uh, status across the country. This year, cost of living increase has, has been uh, judged to be higher than that, 2.7%. It never can exceed 5%. It is statutory in Illinois also that if a district is going to exceed 5% in their ask, in the asking for the next tax levy, there must be a public hearing. And that's what we had last night was public hearing because uh, we have been generally in that neighborhood of 10% increased askings. And that is the CPI plus the new property and together to get them, to get that revenue captured, it's going to be somewhere in that 10% to be safe. So we ask generally more, knowing full well it's not going to be the full percentage that actually gets implemented. Last year, tax year, we had a very minimal uh, increase in revenues uh, for the district as compared to other years. Uh, assuming that, I think the safe assumption is that our budget needs to expand, and I'm sure people would question this, but the normal cost increases in a, in a governmental agency is somewhere between two and four percent per year. So what you think in terms of is what new money is necessary if you want to stay status quo from a, a cost perspective, what new money is necessary to come into the district. Your levy should end up being somewhere in that ballpark of producing 
the new money to stay at least status quo. Last year, that was not the case. We did not receive enough money in the school district to remain status quo. This year is going to be, uh, probably with that 2.7%, is going to be uh, very much in that ballpark. Mm -hmm. so we had the TIF roll off, and during that year, we had a very sizable uh, increase request because with the CPI and the increased property from the TIF, uh, the, the, mm -hmm. the TIF ending, uh, it was going to be a sizable amount of new property that we're going to be entering the tax rolls. For that reason, we had the highest amount since I've been here of close to 20% mm -hmm. asking, and mainly to make sure that that TIF uh, component was captured. Okay. Every government body goes through the same type of thing in a tax cap county as what the Galena School District mm -hmm. and their board did last evening. The way it's presented from a legal perspective, and that's what we do, is present how it's supposed to be done public notice and they see the percentage and think that their taxes, our patrons would guess that the taxes are going to be going up to that extent. The reality is property taxes will only go up in whatever the consumer price index goes up. Mm -hmm. That is uh, that is the probably the main misnomer. Uh, the assumption that the number that's given is the amount that's going up and really the CPI is the driving factor of, of that. Mm -hmm. Of course, what you would hope for, if you do have increased property, in this, that you're broadening your tax base, and with that tax base broadening, more, more taxable property, even that CPI is taken care of because you've got a broader base of, of your patrons paying property tax, and it ends up staying hopefully flat. Discussion that uh, the Board of Education had clear back uh, in reference to the uh, county one percent uh, sales tax question, the infrastructure sales tax. At that point in time, the board indicated uh, their commitment to abate property taxes uh, if this particular uh, question ended up being uh, voted favorably upon. Well, obviously it was put into place and there are some of us that thought, well, if it's only half a cent, maybe there should only be half uh, the abatement take place and our board believe differently. Uh, our board said, no, there was a commitment made then, there were statements made then, let's go for the full abatement. And the actual tax that we're speaking of is the bond and indebtedness that the district has for life safety bonds that were sold several years ago. The actual tax amount for our patrons is always going to be somewhere in the neighborhood between $110,000 and $115,000 annually. Really in the school district, property owners uh, are going to see 100, about $111,000 this year uh, less in taxation. Of course, this varies depending upon how much prop real property that, that a person would have. Uh, the actual amount is five between five and six cents per hundred dollars assessed valuation of real property. I think that, that you could assume that it's going to be in that Twenty to thirty dollar range, mm -hmm. and and frankly, that's the only that's the only tax that this measure, the property or the uh, the ones that sales tax is the only one in this school district that can be abated mm -hmm. via this measure.